you know the uh, coding sequence of a gene is a series of three codons of nucleotides and these uh, series of codons they specify the sequence of amino acids in its polypeptide product so the sequence of a gene which is in the form of codons that is translated into the sequence of amino acids it is generally assumed that the coding sequence is contiguous that is the codon for one amino acid is immediately adjacent to the codon for the next amino acid and in this way the amino uh, the codons of all the amino acids they are adjacent to each other without any space in between this is true in the vast majority of cases in bacteria and their phages but it is rarely so for eukaryotic genes so in prokaryotic uh, uh, organisms Uh, such as bacteria and phages uh, the sequence is uh, contiguous that is all the codons are adjacent to each other but in eukaryotes it is uh, different in those cases the coding sequence is interrupted by stretches of known coding sequences so uh, uh, the uh, full uh, sequence of uh, uh, gene that is interrupted by some known coding sequences many eukaryotic genes are thus mosaics consisting of blocks of coding sequences separated from each other by the blocks of known coding sequences so if we see a gene uh, a eukaryotic gene it will uh, uh, consist of uh, uh, a small sequence of coding sequence and then a small or longer non coding sequence then coding sequence then maybe a long non coding sequence so in this way a eukaryotic gene is uh, uh, made up of the coding sequences are called exons and the non coding or intervening sequences are called introns so a gene uh, is composed of exons and introns once transcribed into an rna transcript the introns must be removed and the exons must be joined together to create the correct mrna of that gene means correct means the uh, uh, mrna with correct amino acid sequence in the protein so this is uh, you can see uh, the structure of eukaryotic gene so in this gene this is a whole gene and this is a strand of dna after transcription this is a primary transcript or it is also called pre mrna and you can see this contains this green portion this is exon and then this yellow portion this is intron then this is exon 2 then intron 2 then exon 3 so this uh, a small stretch contains different exons and introns and after splicing it becomes in this way and this long stretch is only composed of exons there is no intron and then this is transcribed in a protein this is the structure of gene of eukaryotes the number of introns found within a gene varies enormously from one in the case of most yeast genes and few human genes to 50 in the case of chicken pro alpha 2 collagen gene and to as many as 363 in the case of titan gene of humans the sizes of the exon and introns they also vary indeed introns are very often much longer than the exons thus for example exons are typically on the order of 150 nucleotides whereas introns although they too can be short maybe 150 or even shorter than 150 but they can be as long as 800000 nucleotides or 800 kb
As another example, the mammalian gene for the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase is more than 31 kb long and within it are dispersed 6 exons that corresponds to only 2 kb of the mRNA. So the gene is 31 kb and the actual mRNA is only 2 kb. So uh, in this case the coding portion of the gene is 10% or even less uh, of its total length. Like the uninterrupted genes of prokaryotes, the split genes of eukaryotes are transcribed into a single RNA copy of the entire gene, the primary transcript that contains introns as well as exons. Because the length and number of introns in the primary transcript can be very long indeed. As already mentioned, the primary transcript of intron containing genes must have their introns removed before they can be translated into proteins. So the introns must be removed from the uh, pre-mRNA. The process of intron removal is called RNA splicing. It converts the pre-mRNA into mature mRNA that only contains exons. RNA splicing must occur with great precision to avoid the loss or addition of even a single nucleotide at the sites at which two exons join. So, uh, at this joining point, there must not be even loss of a single nucleotide. The triplet nucleotide codons of mRNA are translated in a fixed reading frame that is set by first codon. Why, why the uh, removal of even a single codon is that important? Because all the codons are set in a reading frame and that frame starts from the first codon. And uh, if uh, the uh, uh, one nucleotide is missed at any point, this will uh, disturb all the reading frame. Some pre-mRNAs can be spliced in more than one way. Thus, mRNAs containing different selections of exons can be generated from given pre-mRNA. Alternative splicing strategy enables a gene to give rise to more than one polypeptide product. These alternative products are called isoforms. It is estimated that 90% or more of the protein coding genes in the human genome are spliced in alternative ways to generate more than one isoforms.